Hey there, crazy kids. I am the good old gamer, and it's time that I answer your questions for the 1700 subscribers special Q&A. And first up, first priority are the video responses. This time around, there's only one video response. Came from the Mind Fiend. Thank you very much, Mind Fiend. You can find his video response linked in the description below. Um, should be interesting. Anyways, his question was, what are your top five games that you watch Let's Plays of, and why? Well, the games that I watch Let's Plays of generally are games that I'm either currently playing, I've recently played, or I'm going to be playing pretty soon. Um, so right now, in no particular order, and I guess I don't really think of them as top games, I, they're just happen to be games that I watch frequently, from Let's Plays from other people, be Minecraft, Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, Fallout 3, and Dragon Age Origins. Um, now, of course, with the exception of Fallout 3, which I've completed and am just completely done with, uh, the other games I'm currently playing out and working on, or I will be, and so I feel that I can give the most help to other Let's Players that I watch if they ever need help and I can just get the most out of watching the videos because I uh, have played the games or will be playing them so I get the most enjoyment out of them whereas a game that I haven't played in a few years if I watch a let's play of it the only thing that's really gonna make me do is uh, probably have an interest to play the game again so um, those happen to be the current top five let's plays I guess let's play games I guess that I watch uh, as far as people who actually do the Let's Plays, that also varies. Like, I watch several people who play Minecraft in different ways, um, as well as the other games that I mentioned. So, But as far as games goes, I guess those are my current ones. So thank you, Mind Fiend, for your video, video response question. And to everybody who's interested in watching that, I'll go ahead and link it in the description. Um, I would play it out here. I would play, just play the video out here, but... Um, I've come to decide that uh, the people who make the video responses deserve the views on their video, so instead I'll link it in the description and you guys can go watch their video, and then that way they can get the uh, proper views and credit and everything that they deserve for their efforts. So this time around, Mindfiend, thank you very much, and wow, I gotta say, I'm currently in the Minecraft world that you see here on the screen, as well as answering the questions below that you can see, and uh, the camera angle gets really wacky because I'm sitting on a pig on a saddle, you know. And uh, so the pig's doing whatever it's going to do. I have no control over it. Uh, my pet dogs are following me. And uh, every time the pig gets close to something, whether it's land or the um, trees around, <laughs> the camera angle gets really wacky. So for that, I apologize. But I just thought it'd be a nice visual for you guys to watch while I'm answering the questions. Anyways... I'll be right back with the regular comment question since we only had one video response. So, see you in just a second. Alright, I'm back. And now we're to the uh, regular comments. Uh, the questions posted in the comments section of my questions video for this Q&A. Um, first up, Super Tizro. How long have you been a gamer? I've been a gamer pretty much all my life, ever since I was old enough to uh, know what a video game was, essentially. Um, that's how long I've been a gamer, so there you go. Uh, to put it in perspective, the original consoles that I first... Whoa, hello close-up. That I first um, started playing on were the Atari 2600 and the original Nintendo Entertainment System. The first console that uh, my family owned was the NES, but we had a family friend who, before that, ended up letting us use an Atari 2600. That's how we, that's how me and my brother especially got into gaming, and um, so then after that we convinced our parents to get us a uh, NES, either that Christmas or for one of our birthdays or something, I forget which. But um, we were just little kids then, and in case you're wondering why the bad people in Minecraft here aren't coming after me, it's because I'm in creative mode. 
so they don't come after me anymore. So that's cool. Anyways, wow, we're kind of stuck in a tree, I think. Uh, wow. Yeah, we're stuck in a tree. Camera angles for the loss. Hold on. Also, if you see my cursor on the screen, it's because Cam Studio records a cursor. I could choose it not to, but whatever. I kind of wanted to for other videos. So, And if I change it, I'll forget to change the setting again. So, Anyways, um, yeah, that's the first question. Uh, be right back with the next. All right, back again. Next question is from Penny Pedal Pounce. Yay! Hey, Penny, how you doing? Happy birthday to you, by the way. December fourth. Is it fourth? Yes, December fourth. Uh, I heard from the Mind Fiend that it's your birthday, so happy birthday. Hope this uh, video finds you well. Anyways, um, your first question: Do you like YouTube's new look? Um, I'm getting used to it. It's been up for a day or two now, so I'm getting kind of used to it. But um, I do prefer, as far as the channel designs go, I do prefer the old channel layout. Um, I assume more options will become available as time goes on, but right now the channel layout options that I have for my channel are really very limited and I prefer the old way of being able to move all the different modules around and uh, have a more customized look. Now it's all kind of the same this, besides the uh, background that goes around the edges of it that you can have. So, But as far as like the home page thing goes, I'm getting more used to it and I do kind of like it. Being able to pin up uh, favorite um, subscriptions and that sort of thing to the home page is pretty cool. Uh, it could use some work as well, being able to uh, take off videos you've watched already or something, but I'm sure YouTube will get that figured out after a while. Um, I do prefer the old channel look, but the new YouTube homepage and stuff is pretty nice, and I'm sure it'll get better as time goes on. It's not my favorite thing, but I'm hoping that YouTube adds more features and that this is just the like opening release part. Um... But maybe that's because I'm used to Minecraft, who knows? Anyways, uh, your second question. Since you seem to only Let's Play PC games, would you even think of Let's Playing a console game? Uh, I have the Xbox, the original Xbox, not, not the 360, the original Xbox, um, the Nintendo GameCube, and a PlayStation 2, and I do have a few games for all of those systems. And... I could let's play them right now, but the only capture thing I have for them to get them recorded is kind of crappy. And I mean, the, the recording quality is just utter crap. And um, I'm not really sure. I've tried a few attempts to get it working right, but I'm not really sure how to do it real well. Um, if you want an idea, of the kind of ugliness uh, the uh, games would look like, the console games. Um, check out the uh, the uh, Jade Empire special making of DVD thingy that I have. Just look up Jade Empire on my channel and you'll come across two videos, I think, of it because I split it into two parts. And... Um, that's the kind of quality that the games would be because I used the DVD playing capability of the Xbox to record that using the capture software that would also record the games because I couldn't figure out a better way to record it so um, that's the sort of quality you would get and it's not very good and that's not to say I really particularly care too much when it comes to quality um, as far as gaming goes because I know you guys watch a lot for more for the commentary and that sort of thing but at the same time it's really terrible terrible quality I kind of need a better uh, capture thing 
Uh, it's good to start off with, especially if you're brand new to Let's Playing and stuff, but I need something like a, um, what is it, a Dazzle or something like that? But I can't afford to get one of those right now, so I'm kind of waiting on that. Maybe, depending on what I get for Christmas, I might be able to get a Dazzle, and uh, if I do, I'll probably get started on recording Xbox games for certain. I have a ton of Xbox games, original Xbox games. I don't really have too much for the other consoles, the GameCube or the um, PlayStation 2, but I do have quite a bit for the Xbox. And uh, I actually wouldn't mind recording those console games because there wouldn't be such the lag issue because the consoles would be running the games and all my computer would be doing would be recording. Um, I'm also hoping that either the Dazzle or the recording software that I get to do it would have some way of including um, commentary because right now another thing about the capture software that I have is that it only records the game footage and the sounds from the game footage so to do commentary has to be separate which means um, it can get a bit tricky to do live commentary so a lot of the time that I've tried to get started on a console game uh, I've had to do post commentary which doesn't come off as well just because it's just me watching my recorded game footage and so half the time I attempt to pretend that I'm live recording it to make it more interesting to you guys and then halfway through I kind of like fail because it's you know it's not a surprise to me because I've already played the game and and then that comes off in the commentary and that's another reason why I haven't done the console thing yet so I'm hoping the Dazzler or whatever software I get has a uh, way to capture the commentary as well that would be nice but even if it doesn't, as long as I get a Dazzle or something that has better quality, I'll figure out, especially now that I have uh, like Audacity and stuff, I could probably figure out a way to uh, do live commentary and then just sync it up in editing. But we'll see. Maybe after Christmas and I have the money to afford it, I can uh, get some better recording software for consoles and look into doing that. If I can, it'll probably be an Xbox game that I play. Um, just because I have a lot of original Xbox games, Halo, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, 1 and 2, actually Halo 1 and 2, um, and a bunch of the other games, Jade Empire and Splinter Cell, like the first three Splinter Cell games I have for the Xbox, and um, pretty much any major hit for the Xbox I end up having, so... That'd be interesting to get into, and I'd really like to, because those games are pretty fun, but like I said, I need some better capture software. Not that the original Xbox games, the footage will be like super high-def quality anyway, because it's original Xbox, it's not high-definition like the 360 or whatever, but um, I'm really hoping like a Dazzle or something would be better quality than what I have already. Um, so yes, I have considered thinking of let's playing console games I just don't have the appropriate stuff to do it and uh, so yeah that's it from Penny Petal Pants thank you and I hope you enjoy the Oblivion videos hopefully I can get more into Oblivion as the days go on um, anyways on to the next questions alright back and on to the next question this one comes from X, Mr. Baker. Um, hey, Gog. Just wondering, how do you motivate yourself to make your videos? I've tried so hard to start, but every time I just think, what's the point? Um, I just have fun. I, I just uh, find it to be a fun hobby, a good way to kill time. And um, the feedback I get from you guys is nice, and uh, it's great encouragement for me to keep going. I've never been worried about views, I've never been worried about subscribers, I've never even been worried about comments, likes, favorites, any of that stuff. I just put my videos up there and um, I assume that uh, people will get something out of it eventually. As long as, you know, one person watches a video and gets something out of it, then my job's done. Um, now, 
most of my Minecraft videos, especially at this point, are just silly um, Minecraft videos. You're just watching me build or cave or explore or whatever. But when I originally started Let's Playing, I started with Mass Effect because I really like the Mass Effect game. And uh, I've said this story before, but when I was originally um, starting my channel, I didn't even intend to do any gaming videos. I just wanted to watch Let's Plays of Mass Effect from other people and I had my channel just so I could comment on their videos. Well it came up that um, I really couldn't find Mass Effect Let's Plays that included everything. They'd always skip stuff. They'd skip side quests, they'd skip leveling up their character or their team characters and um, all that stuff I was interested in but I couldn't find a good Let's Play that included everything. And I felt that Mass Effect was a very fun game and deserved its due and deserved to have everything on YouTube. Uh, and I figured if I was the only, I figured I couldn't be the only one that uh, wanted to see the entire game on YouTube. Either from somebody who hasn't played the game yet and wanted to see what it was all about, or from somebody who has played the game and wanted to see what other people do in it. So when I originally started, one of the things I wanted to do was get all of Mass Effect on YouTube. So that was another reason that I kept going. And then by the time, of course, I got Mass Effect done, 250 videos later, uh, I'd been started with other games and had other things going. And I had something of a following at that point, and the feedback and interaction from the viewers and stuff, it kept me going from there. But um, my advice to anybody trying to start Let's Playing, thinking they might want to get into it, do it for you. Do it. F find a reason that you want to do it for yourself. Don't worry about somebody watching your videos. Don't worry about how many subscribers you have or how many views you're getting or how many likes you're getting or anything like that because the chances are you're not going to be very popular for a while. You can get popular on YouTube if you're really lucky and you get the right connections and that sort of thing, but not just starting off. It's going to take a while for people to find you. And even if you do get popular, it's going to take a while for people to... Uh, spread the word and get your channel known and all that stuff and you really shouldn't worry about that anyway that shouldn't be your goal um, if you're gonna be a let's player do it because you're having fun with it because you want to because it's a fun hobby for you those are the types of let's plays um, that I watch anyway those are the type of let's players that I watch or people that are doing it for the fun of it doing it because they're having fun because they like the feedback that they're getting people that aren't worried about subscribers people that aren't worried about you know a crap ton of self-promotion and all that. Not that I'm against anybody promoting their stuff, but at the same time, you should be doing it because you want to do it, because it's fun, because it's a fun hobby, because it's something you want to do. Maybe you know something about a game that you want to show off. Maybe you're good with tips or tricks. Maybe you just want to act silly. Um, maybe you've been watching Let's Plays of a certain game and you haven't found people being silly enough in it and you want to act silly or something like that. Um, in fact, there's a few Let's Players that I watch that um, play out the uh, bad sides of a RPG kind of game like Mass Effect or other games because they're not finding enough people doing that on YouTube. So they put that up there. So there's always a reason beyond just being popular or getting views or that sort of thing that you can be making videos for. Um, make it for yourself for some reason that um, you enjoy doing and um, that'll keep you going and eventually you'll get a following from what you're doing for yourself I never thought I would ever have 1700 subscribers I never thought I'd have a hundred subscribers um, and at the same time you know I don't I don't particularly care one way or the other I mean I appreciate the uh, views and stuff but the number is just a number I, I much more appreciate um, the fact that uh, when somebody watches a video, they let me know. You know, they say, um, thanks for the video. They say, oh, hey, I didn't know that before. Or maybe you could do it this way next time. Or, hey, would you mind playing this game next? Or, you know, something like that. Um, the viewers that I remember are the viewers that leave feedback and interact. Um, that's the reason that I do these subscriber Q&As, is for you guys who... Uh, show your interest and support by you know actually participating and wanting to know more about me and that sort of thing so 
those are the subscribers I remember. I, I remember, and I uh, appreciate the most. Uh, I appreciate all my viewers, whether they're quiet or not. Most of my viewers are quiet. Uh, I'm lucky to get a handful of comments on any given video, but um, the numbers in themselves don't don't matter to me. They never have. I've said this before in plenty of videos. You know, I make these videos um, mainly because it's a fun hobby and it uh, it's a good way to kill time. I'm an introverted person by default, so I spend a lot of time uh, on my own when I'm not at work or have some other social obligation to go to, so this is a good way to kill time. And on top of that, a lot of my Let's Plays, not Minecraft in particular, but a lot of my Let's Plays tend to be more on the informative side because I usually play games that I've played before and I know fairly well. So it's... Um, it's nice that uh, people have been given new information, tips and tricks and whatnot from my videos. That's always nice to know. And um, I always learn from my viewers as well, especially like in Minecraft. Hey, maybe you could build this. Hey, maybe you could do this. Hey, maybe you could have, you know, gone this way in the cave. Hey, you missed this bit of resources, you know, that sort of thing. So there's always a nice give and take. But um, just starting out, like I said, um, just do it because you're having fun doing it. Uh, maybe you can provide something to the YouTube community that you're not seeing a lot of people provide. Uh, maybe you just want to kill time. Who knows? You know, maybe you're just playing your favorite game and you want to show it off to the to the world at large. Just um, do it to have fun. If you're doing it to be popular. Uh, you might as well not start because you're not going to be popular just starting off. You may eventually get popular, but th you're going to get really disappointed if you're just expecting to be super popular overnight. Um, do it because you're having fun, and the rest will come with time. Uh, I've been on YouTube two years now. December 10th will be my two-year anniversary. I started this channel on December 10th, 2009, and... Uh, all things considered, I'm not very popular. I mean, 1,700 subscribers is a lot, but when you think about people like uh, Minecraft Workbench or SSO HPKC, they have you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers. So um, my lack of popularity doesn't stop me from making videos. Uh, and most of my videos don't even get more than 100 or 200 views at the most. That doesn't stop me from making videos. Um, I just put them up there, and so I know somebody, somewhere, sometime, is going to watch my videos and like them. Um, and that's enough for me. YouTube is a 24-7 thing. Yeah, I could put up a video, and, you know, two years from now, somebody could be watching it and getting something from it. Um, that's one of the good things about being an, a Let's Player of games, is that they never really go out of style. And unless you're really dating your commentary with you know, today's news and that sort of thing. Um, anybody can watch your videos anytime and get something from it. So, yeah, I'm not really worried too much about it. And that's why, so I guess, long story short, that's why I keep making videos. is because I'm having fun with it, and I know that somebody somewhere is going to get something out of it, so that's enough for me. Um, YouTube's a big place. I've never done really any self-promotion at all. I've never gone out and you know, spam channels or ask for sub for sub or any of that stuff. And 1,700 people along the way have somehow found me. So, you know, there's plenty of people on YouTube that will find your stuff. It's just going to take time. So you just, you got to make videos for yourself or otherwise don't bother making them because you're not going to have fun and you're going to get disappointed. Um, so that's my advice. Anyways, hope that helps. And uh, on to the next question. All right, I'm back. On to the next question, and that's uh, Mr. B.S.H. Reffler. I'm sorry if I got that name wrong. Um, question one, how do you like that outro? Um, if you've watched the uh, questions video for this Q&A, uh, the Street Viper left an outro, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um it, it's of a different resolution than um, my videos usually are. 
because it's uh, more of the standard definition and mine's the high definition. Uh, actually, that's the wrong way to look at it. Mine's widescreen and his and the outro from the Street Viper was standard screen, 4x3. Mine's 16x9 because of 720 resolution, most of my videos are. Um, but other than that, it was nice. I, I have no complaints about it. I mean, why would I be dumb enough to look a free gift horse in the mouth? You know, that sort of thing. Uh, one of my viewers was willing to make me an outro. was really excited and interested in doing it, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, the music was nice. The uh, It was the theme from Mirror's Edge, which was one of the games that I've actually completed. It was a rather short game, actually. It only took me 30 some videos, 33 videos or something to get through. Uh, and I really enjoyed that game. I love the uh, theme for Mirror's Edge. And to hear it in more of an 8-bit kind of version was really cool. And it was a nice outro. And it used, of course, blues, which I'm a fan of. I like blues. Any shade of blue. I'm, my favorite color is blue. And that's what most of the outro was. So that was nice. So it was really good. Um, now, I'm not a big fan of self-promotion, like I've said already in this video. But um, I didn't mind the outro. I'm probably not going to use it a whole lot, um, mainly because of the way I record. I record in um, hour-long to two-hour-long recording sessions rather than episode by episode or video by video, so outros and intros aren't exactly very handy in that respect. Um, but I might use it more on occasion for vlogs or these kinds of videos, where it's not necessarily a gaming video but me just rambling on about stuff. Um, that might work because these are usually singular vid videos, um, but it was it was nice. I'm always appreciative of when somebody's so interested enough in what I do in my videos and in my channel and stuff that they want to support me. Whether it's um, through that outro or through this character skin that I'm using right here, the um, Minecraft character skin that I have right now was from. Diecam Studios, and I really appreciate his work on that. The um, painterly texture pack that I'm using right now, that was altered by uh, the Mind Fiend to include multiple whoa, to include multiple um, versions of animal skins. That's why you can see different dogs right now. The orange dogs, the gray dogs, that sort of thing is because the Mind Fiend was kind enough to alter the uh, texture pack for me to include those. So it's always nice to get stuff like that. I originally, before the, um, well not originally, but before the new YouTube layout, I had a custom background that was made by another viewer. Um, I think it was, I think his name's Civil Editing or something like that anyways. Um, he made me a custom background and he's going to make me another one for this new YouTube layout whenever he gets the specifics and stuff um, figured out for that. And that'll be awesome. I always appreciate when viewers are willing to help support my channel with those contributions and stuff. It's always nice. Even if they um, end up giving me something I'm not particularly fond of, like uh, channel backgrounds that maybe don't jive with the uh, sort of look I'm going for. Maybe they don't have the right colors or whatever. You know, it, it it's still something that I appreciate nonetheless because it shows that they care and they have that kind of support and interest in what I do, and it's really nice. And now that all that's it, I'm not like trying to obligate or guilt trip anybody into doing anything like that. I, I totally want it to be out of you know a viewer's interest, out of their own motivations and stuff. Uh, I did ask for some help in the character skin and the uh, painterly texture pack alterations just because I'm not good at that graphical artistic kind of stuff but um, you know I didn't expect anybody to be obligated to it I just asked anybody that was interested in helping if they could help and I appreciate that um, anybody who's willing to contribute in that way I will certainly give the appropriate um, response to and take the time to check it out and consider it. I can't guarantee I'll use it because 
like I said, I can only use one thing at a certain time. And other people have contributed different Minecraft texture packs and that sort of thing as well. I think even the Street Viper made a uh, texture pack earlier, the Vipercraft. And, um, you know, others have contributed other texture packs as well, but I can only really use one texture pack for a series at a time. I guess I could use different ones, but I like to keep my series, um, what is it? Uh, keep it all the same in the sing in the similar series, so I can only use one texture pack per series, and switching them on and off will get kind of fusing. But um, I always appreciate viewer contributions like that. It shows that you have an interest, that you care. Um, you know, and I, and I appreciate that some sometimes people contribute stuff because they also want to get a shout out every now and then you know they want to get their stuff out there as well and you know I'm not worried about that either if you're gonna contribute something I'm gonna give you an appropriate shout out and credit for it I mean why wouldn't I that would be rather ungrateful to just take your stuff and not give you any credit for it right um, and if somebody contributes something that I like they should get the credit for it so <clears throat> all around it's a good thing so I like the outro I guess yeah um, in fact, I'm going to show you guys at the end of this video the same outro, but uh, the Street Viper updated it for a better resolution, I guess. So be sure to check that out. And question number two, how's life? <laughs> well, life's doing all right. Um, I work in retail, so the holiday season right now kind of sucks uh, for various reasons. But overall, I'm doing all right. I'm doing what I like, and uh, my job is all right. And um, I could be in a much worse off space, uh, much worse off sort of uh, time in my life. I have been before, but I'm doing really well now, so I can't really complain all to, all that much. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the holidays being over and spring coming and all that good stuff. It's also winter here. That's kind of a downer, but whatever. Um, doing all right. Uh, what's up? So let's see the rest of your comment. I really wish I could get this answered because I've asked tons of questions on other videos and get no response. Uh, if you're referring to previous videos of mine, like previous Q&As, uh, my Q&As have a certain time limit. Usually it's within a few days or within a week or whatever of the posting of the video. And then, of course, I do what I'm doing now, which is answering those questions. And then once I've answered them, that's the end of the Q&A session. So if you post questions after that, um, that may be why they haven't been answered. Now, if you're uh, talking about other videos of mine just in general, like other Let's Plays and stuff, and you leave a comment asking question and all that, I do try to get to those. So I apologize if I've missed any of those. I do try and keep up with comments as much as I can. Now, some comments either don't really necessitate a response or aren't... Uh, aren't really worth responding to, I guess, but I wouldn't say yours are, because I can't really recall yours on specifics, but just like spamming things like first and those kinds of comments don't really need a response, but um, I do try to keep up with comments as much as I can. Um, YouTube has kind of a crappy system of letting me know when videos have been commented on. Sometimes the notices get through and sometimes they don't either through youtube's own notifications or through emails and stuff um so it can be kind of hit or miss but certainly for these q and a's as long as you get your questions in before the uh deadline so to speak i do try to get all the questions answered so hopefully i haven't missed out and hopefully your response in terms of missing questions was from uh, other people's videos but i do apologize if i missed any and, uh, all right, that should be it for, for those questions. On to the next ones. All right. Now, this one isn't so much of a question as a statement, but I'd like to respond to it anyway. Um, Mr. Cod MW223, sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that watches your vids most of the time. Um, it can feel that way if you're concerned with about comments and stuff, but um, 
Most of my viewers are quiet viewers. I've come to know and somewhat appreciate that. Uh, I'd much rather have someone not make a comment than comment with like first or other useless comments. Um, and I actually don't mind because I'm more of a quiet watcher myself most of the time. Unless I have so something specific to um, tell the person making the video, um, like a game tip or something like that. A lot of the times I'm just a quiet viewer as well. Um, so that's why it may seem like you're the only one that watches my videos sometimes because most of my viewers are just quiet viewers they watch my videos and then they move on they don't really leave a lot of comments uh, i only have a specific like i've said before a handful of people that leave um comments on my videos most of the time so yeah it can feel like sometimes um you know, whoever's watching my video is the only one watching my video, but other people watch them. Most of my videos get anywhere between 100 and 200 views on average. Um, I mean, some get more if they've been around a long time or if they're the first few videos of a series, but most of my viewers are quiet viewers, so I just thought I'd like to put that out there. It's not that you're the only one watching, it's just that maybe you might be the only one that has wanted to make a comment or anything maybe you feel like you're wanting to make a comment but uh, you would prefer if somebody else made a comment first um i don't know but um i do appreciate your viewership even if you were the only viewer to watch my videos i do appreciate your viewership and so it's not a bad thing if even if you would be the only viewer it, it would still mean a lot to me so um yeah i just thought i'd like to address that on to the next questions. Alright, I'm back with the next question. This one's from Diecam Studios. Hey, DCS, thank you very much for the skin that you see here on the screen. It's pretty cool, and I do appreciate it. Um, question is, what does Notch need to do to fix Minecraft, and what would you do to fix Minecraft? Um, I don't know, really. Um, you know what's in minecraft is in minecraft so there's there's really not too much that he could do other than maybe make pigs that you ride on a saddle controllable because this pig is going crazy and really likes trees and that's terrible for camera views but uh, no just kidding um i don't know really what could be done to fix minecraft i mean it's it is what it is. Uh, the additions are in there, and you use them or you don't. And the, you know, there are always bug fixes, but they're pretty good at fixing the bug fixes or fixing the bugs, I should say. So, um, I don't know really. Um, trying to think of anything in particular that would be good. Um, oh, the ability to turn it day without using a bed in creative would be nice maybe just hitting a button or hitting a command or something that'd be good um but i guess that's really not a fix uh wow okay i was really stuck in a tree there sorry um i don't really know i mean it, it, it is what it is at this point. I've come to realize that Minecraft is just going to be what it is. So. Pig, if you could get away from the trees, that would be awesome. Anyways. Uh, what would I do to fix Minecraft? I don't know. What would I do? Um. Oh, probably not a whole lot. I guess make mod support official. Make it easier to include mods somehow, rather than going through all the installation crap we have to go through. <laughs> I'd just like it to be a similar thing to um, texture packs, where you literally just select mods from a menu screen, like you do texture packs, and you can turn them on and off that way, and that'd be nice if there was a way to do that an easier way to install like an official um, mod 
installer or something, something to make it easier where you could just literally do what you do with texture packs and open up a folder, put your texture, put your mod, you know, zip file or whatever in, close the folder and play Minecraft and it'd be in there, you know. All this other stuff for installing mods is just annoying. Um, that's why I don't use mods a whole lot and that's why it took me forever to get started using mods the, for that one series that I did use them. Um, so official mod support would be one thing that either he could include or something I would certainly include if I were in charge of the development. That would be one of the priorities, the main priority. Other than that, eh, Minecraft is going to be what Minecraft is going to be. And that's just how it is. So, um, yeah, I guess that. Official mod support one way or another. That would be nice. Uh, because a lot of the things that I want in Minecraft probably are you just aren't going to be in it officially, so official mod support would be super. Alright, thanks again for the skin. On to the next question. Alright, I'm back with the next question. This one's from Tribal Wolf 1977 Congrats on 1,700 subscribers. Thank you. Uh, my question, having spent many hours playing Fallout 3, what improvements, changes would you like to see in Fallout 4? which I assume New Vegas doesn't count as Fallout 4. <laughs> um, improvements or changes that I would like to see in Fallout 4. Uh, well, let's see. I'm trying to think of what could be decently improved. Um, I'd like there to be a better balance between... Um, enemies and not necessarily the player character but I'd like there to be a better scale because um, if any of you have watched my Fallout 3 Let's Play or if any of you have even played Fallout 3 you'll know that up to a certain point and I don't really know what the level is maybe 10 or above in character level um, but up to a certain up to that certain point whatever it is your character has a fairly decent challenge against most enemies that it comes across. Whether it be the stupid little vicious dogs, or even the um, raiders, or any of the other things, the ghouls, all of those are fairly even challenges, and they could all give you a fair bit of trouble. But then you reach that certain level point, whatever it is, 10, 15, I don't know, somewhere in there, and then suddenly everything is easy except for a very few select enemies. Everything else is easy as pie. Um, nothing can really touch you in the game or really harm you to any significant challenging level except for Reavers and maybe the occasional super mutant overlord assuming there's like more than one on the screen at the same time. Um, it's just that there's a select few and then these enemies come in through the DLCs. They're not even in the original game, like uh, the Reavers and stuff. They all came in through, I think it was Broken Steel. And if not Broken Steel, it was one of the other DLCs that I played. And um, they were just incredibly tough compared to the other enemies. I mean, you would be going through, you know, ten different uh, regular ghouls, whether they be the regular ghouls, the uh, glowing ones, or whatever, and you'd just be going right through them like, you know, a hot knife through butter, just no problem at all. And then all of a sudden you'd come up to a single reaver, a single ghoul reaver, and you'd get your butt handed to you like that. I mean, they would take like, I don't know how many shots with your most damaging gun to kill and, you know, a couple swipes from their hand and you would fall over and die. Didn't matter what armor and stuff you were wearing. So the balance between the enemies was really... <sighs> At first, most of the regular enemies... Like, if you didn't have any of the DLCs for Fallout 3, once you hit level 10 or 15, whatever that mark is, all the enemies in the game would just be easy. All of them. There would be almost no challenge after a certain point, especially if you knew how to build your character. If you took the time to figure out the uh, skills, the stats... All of the stuff that you wanted to make, your character would just be owning against the enemies on no matter what, which way you were going, no matter what gun you were using, that sort of thing. Um, you really have to gimp your character in order to make keep it a challenge throughout the whole game. Well, if you, like I said, if you add some of the DLCs, all of a sudden the um, 
very specific certain few enemies just get uber tough and there's no gradual scaling with your character there's no even in between the enemies themselves there's no gradual give and take so that's one improvement that I would like to see in the next major Fallout game. I don't, I've never even played New Vegas, so I don't know how well they handled it there, but in a specific like Fallout 4 or something, definitely an improvement in the enemies, either scaling to the player character or just having a, um, a, a more scale between the enemies themselves rather than having a basic easy-to-kill enemy and then all of a sudden super hard enemy to kill and almost nothing in between. By the way, I gotta say it's kind of surreal to be next to a creeper and not have him want to blow up. <laughs> but anyways, um, um, yeah, those that's the biggest improvement from Fallout 3 to the next Fallout game I would like to see would be an improvement in enemies. Uh, assuming I ever can afford to get or play New Vegas, I would hope that would be one of the big, big changes. Um, otherwise, I think Fallout 3 was a pretty good game on its own. Uh, it was nice and open open world, but it wasn't too huge. Uh, everything seemed to flow for pretty well. Um, I guess I would appreciate the side quests having more, more of a tie-in to the main story. Because in Fallout 3, you didn't have to do any of the side quests at all and you wouldn't miss anything from the main story. Not that side quests should take anything from the main story, but they should at least tie in somehow. You were never directly encouraged to go after any of the side quests. They were just optional completely. and um, But there was never any incentive. It was just you happened upon this person who needs some help and you can choose either to help them or not. Or, you know, to be a big jerk to them or whatever but there was never any any reason to go help those specific people especially considering the fact that you're busy trying to you know stomp the enclave and save the world and all that sort of stuff there was no real incentive to uh take time out of doing that in order to uh pursue these side quests so i would like something more in line with that, but um, otherwise, I think Fallout 3 was a pretty good game on its own. I think it was alright. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much else to to say that, that could be improved on it necessarily. Um, I don't know, I suppose that's about it. Uh, I would like the perks to be better um or at the very least take out the unnecessary ones because there are a few unnecessary perks in fallout 3 that i as a player would never choose under any circumstances like there's one that gives you the next level immediately to your character so you get to level up again immediately but you're essentially wasting a perk on that and you really don't need to level up immediately because you hit max level in the game anyway, long before the game's over. Even if you don't have the D the Broken Steel DLC to get you to level 30, even if you're stuck on level the max level of 20 for the original game, you're still going to hit that way before you ever hit, get through the, mid, the, the end of the game as long as you're doing all the side quests and stuff. So um, I like perks that are actually useful besides that kind of thing and then there's another perk in there that gives you extra experience and that's kind of a, a wasted perk as well because like I said you're gonna get to the end of the maximum level before you hit the end of the game anyway um, some more useful perks more interesting perks as well not necessarily just skill boosts but I'm a big fan of the more interesting perks like um, the ability for for more damage uh, based on critical hits or the ability for more critical hits or the ability for damage uh, against uh, the opposite gender enemies like for example I played a guy so all the female characters took extra damage from my attacks that was nice um, those sorts of more unique uh, perks are the ones that I like rather than just the basic skill boost or whatever because as I've shown in the game it's also fairly possible to uh, 
boost the skills in the game without a lot of those skill boosting perks to uh, get them all maxed out so yeah um, mainly though I just really want the enemies to be more balanced in a Fallout game Fallout 3 wasn't that great at it so I'm hoping a Fallout 4 or the next Fallout in the series would be better at that um, anyways I've gone on long enough with this question on to the next one Alright, I'm back with the next question. This one comes from Super Foxes. I like that name. That's a pretty cool name. Um, do you have any pets? If not, what would you have as a pet? Well, I live in an apartment that doesn't allow pets, so no, unfortunately, I don't have any pets. Probably don't have the um, affordability to uh, really take care of a pet anyway, except maybe like a pet goldfish or something. But, um,. Ideally, if I did have a pet, I would probably have a dog. <laughs> uh, probably one of the smaller, easier to take care of dogs, like a beagle or something. Um, or else a cat. I can't really decide one way or the other because um, I like cats for the fact that they're fairly self-sufficient. If you leave food out for them and you leave their litter box in a place that they can find it and stuff, they can take care of themselves and uh, they'll come up to you for love and affection whenever they want it and you don't have to necessarily go to them and bug them and that sort of thing and um, so that's one of the uh, good things about cats uh, the reason that I like dogs is because well that old saying about their man's best friend is really true um, especially depending on the dog you get they can really love you all the time they'll they're uh, they really do um, become your best friend other than the fact that they can't you know hold a conversation with you <laughs> but um, I, I, I do love dogs it's just that um, the one disadvantage to dogs is they're not they're not nearly as self-sufficient as um, cats are meaning you have to go take them for walks and that sort of thing um, and they can be a little bit more troublesome to have when you're living in town like I live now. So, um, I don't know. I, I guess for the um, functionality and convenience of it, I'd probably have a cat. But all things considered, the ideal pet would probably be a dog like a beagle or something. I think beagles, beagles are pretty awesome. If you've seen uh, the show Enterprise... Um, Porthos was a beagle, was the captain's dog. That was that guy was pretty cute. So um, that's probably something I would have. But uh, I'd more than likely, if I had a pet, probably just end up having a cat because they're fairly self self sufficient <laughs> and easy to take care of. Um, but then again, you know, the disadvantage to having a cat is that a lot of them end up with cat hair everywhere around your house and. I don't know if I'd want to deal with that, so maybe I'd just end up with a goldfish, too. Who who knows? But, um, there you go. That's the kind of pet I'd have. Can't have a pet right now, because, like I said, I'm in an apartment that doesn't allow for them, but there you go. On to the next question. Alright, I'm back, and the next question is from Uno Wild. What was it that helped you commentate better in your videos? Was it just time, or did you find something you could share with us future commentators? Um, a lot of it was just time. Just getting used to doing it. Because <laughs> uh, when, uh, when you're Let's Playing like I am, especially when you're playing single-player games, or you're making single-player videos, you're talking to yourself. And don't mind that that was my fridge <laughs> but anyways you're talking to yourself and um, you have to come up with things to talk about um, so that's a, that's one reason why I like playing games for my let's plays that I played already is because I know what's coming I know tips and tricks I can share I can be informative I can have things to talk about and most of the games that I play like Mass Effect for example when I can't come up with something to talk about there's always something going on in the game that's doing the talking for me. Like there's a cutscene, there's dialogue, there's stuff going on that I don't have to interrupt and I don't have to worry about talking about. Um, games like Minecraft, I wouldn't really recommend somebody start 
Let's Playing with Minecraft, unless they have some specifics in mind of what they're going to do, what they're going to talk about, that sort of thing. Um, or unless they're really, really into the game, unless they played it a while and they're really good at it, and that sort of thing. Because Minecraft doesn't allow for the game to really take over your commentary for you. Uh, when you're playing Minecraft, you have to you have to have commentary ready to go. You have to have things to talk about. And that that's probably one of the biggest issues I have when I play Minecraft as a Let's Player is coming up with interesting things to talk about. Um, I can't believe anybody still watches my Minecraft videos because I don't even have the game itself to talk about anymore. I don't even have things to talk about about how do you craft this, how do you craft that, because everybody knows by now, and plus I've already done those videos. Um, so Minecraft is fairly difficult when it comes to commentaries because you you have to find things to talk about. Even in games that provide dialogues and stuff, you still have to find things to talk about. So um, what's made me better? Just time, just getting used to it. Once you've done a few Let's Play videos, not even like an entire series, just once you've done a few videos, you've get you've got a rhythm down. You've got an idea of what you want to talk about. You may even be lucky enough to have a few viewers that give you kind of a direction, maybe. And even if you don't, even if you don't have any comments back on your videos, any feedback, you get used to it. You get past the nervousness, the um, the newness of it, <laughs> that awkwardness of talking to yourself the whole time. You get over that and you get into the game more and you get focused more on the game and what you're doing and that sort of thing. So time is a big part of it. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple of years now, so most of the time, uh, I'm it's old habit to me. So it's just coming up with new things to talk about that I have the problems with. But um, another thing will be that um, after you've started out and you've got even just a small following, um, you'll get feedback from your viewers about you know they found this funny they found that informative they found this entertaining they found that to be something they maybe didn't like or you you know you'll get a vibe of what um people watching your videos like from you and what they don't and you can kind of veer yourself more in line with what your viewers want now that's not i'm not saying you shouldn't be yourself because in my videos i just talk about whatever i want to talk about and i do whatever i want to do and people either like it or they don't whatever but um you get a certain, you'll get a rhythm set up, you'll get a vibe set up, and your feedback, the more feedback you get will help you, and um, you'll once you get more used to it and get past the awkwardness and stuff, you'll find certain, certain things that jive really well. You, you'll just get into a certain style, and it'll just go. Um, I remember a while back, I started saying, hey there, crazy kids, I am the good old gamer, and that was my intro. And when I first started it, that was just what I said. I didn't even really think about it. But then I started watching my videos back, and I started realizing I said that pretty much every time I <laughs> introed a video, and it just sort of became a thing. Now I do kind of say that on purpose, just because it's my certain style, my certain thing to do, and it kind of differentiates me from the next person you watch, you know. And But you'll find certain things like that, things you like to say. You'll find certain common phrases that you say over and over again that becomes part of your style for your commentary and and that sort of thing um the biggest thing that uh, i could say to help with your commentary is just say what you want play the game how you want say what you want do what you want it's your videos it's your channel it's your commentary um don't worry about what people will will think about it it's always nice to get constructive criticism, and it's always nice to get good positive feedback. But at the end of the day, they're your videos. Um, and your commentary is going to be much better and much more interesting and entertaining if you're just just playing the game, just having fun, just having a good reactions, just being yourself and not being like too scripted or too put on to fake you know what I'm you know what I mean I hope that's getting through um, like I said a lot of it just takes a lot of time um, just get used to it don't expect to be a perfect um, commentator 
your first few videos in, or even like an entire series, game series in. I, I've done this for two years now, and I don't think I'm all that great. Um, other people who watch me seem to think I'm pretty good, but I don't really think I'm all that great, but whatever. Uh, I just say what I'm going to say and react how I'm going to react, and that's that. Um, the biggest hurdle is really just getting used to doing it. Once you're past that hurdle, everything else will come to you. You'll get your own style eventually, and um, you know your viewers will let you in on what they like and what they don't and that sort of thing, and you can either go with it or don't. Um, it's up to you. Um, there are millions and millions of people on YouTube and millions more coming in like every day, so you're bound to get viewers that like you no matter what you do. <laughs> Lord knows 1,700 subscribers later and apparently people seem to like what I do. I don't know why, but whatever. There you go. Um, so really, I hope that helps. There's really not any major like secret tip that I could say other than once you get past that initial awkward phase you're good to go. So, um, you know, I can't really say your style is going to be different than mine. So that's just how it goes. Just um, as long as you know what you want to talk about, as long as you can find things to talk about, that's all you really need. Uh, don't worry about your accent. Don't worry about your language. Don't. There's going to be somebody that's going to watch your videos. I can guarantee it. If 1,700 people can come and go watching my videos, anybody anybody can get their videos watched it's not that big of a deal um but yeah that's my advice i guess anyways on to the next question all right i'm back with the next question this one's from hpx reloaded where do you live i live in western south dakota in the united states so uh northern midwest sort of i guess of the u.s so there you go. Uh, do you like Germans? Sure, I like Germans, I guess. That was kind of a random question. Um, in fact, I watch at least one German uh, here on YouTube who does Let's Plays, Mamaki1987. She's pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, I like Germans, I guess. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, their chocolate's pretty awesome, too. Anyways, um, I guess that's it. So thanks for your questions, and on to the next ones. All right, back with more questions. This one's from Fresh Up from my feet up. Okay. Uh, do you ever plan to stream? I'd like to stream, but I can't. I've tried it. I've tried to get it going. I've tried to set it up because I thought it'd be pretty cool, but it doesn't work out, so I can't really do it, unfortunately. So, sorry for that. Um, maybe if I had a better computer or a, a second computer that could handle the streaming or something I don't really know how to uh, how to say it but um, it, it's just really it it's really bad for some reason um, it doesn't really affect like my gameplay or anything like that but uh, the video itself I, I like have to for a even remotely decent stream I have to have like a super small window resolution thing for the stream itself and eh. And then the quality in it is just crap, and I, I don't know. I don't know how anybody gets it figured out. You must take a really super computer to do one of those live streams and do it even decently. So can't really do it. I'd like to, but I can't as of now. Maybe if I get a better computer or second computer or something, I could get that figured out better. But as of right now, no, not really. Unfortunately, can't really do it. So, oh well. Um, yeah. Anyways, do you have your own Minecraft server? And if so, do you ever plan on making it public? I don't have my mine, my own Minecraft server. Um, I don't know how to set one up for one, and I even if I could figure it out, which I assume shouldn't be too difficult to figure out, uh, I don't have a dedicated computer to run it. I only have my one computer, and you know, if I'm making Let's Plays and stuff, I can't have a server going at the same time. So <laughs> my computer has enough trouble recording and running a game decently on its own without having a bunch of other stuff going at the same time. So again, if I had a second computer that could be strictly dedicated to having, you know, Minecraft going all the time, or, you know, a second option would be to afford to be able to pay for an off-site, you know, cloud server or something, um, that would be an option. But again, I can't afford to do that 
I can't afford to pay X amount of dollars every month for that sort of thing. So, um, no, I don't have my own Minecraft server, and I, if I did, I would make it public. There would be, well, it wouldn't be necessarily public. It'd be more of a whitelisted sort of thing where I would have to, I or somebody else would have to select people to get on because I won't want my Minecraft server griefed and everything. So that's just stupid, but, um, I would certainly share it with you guys if I did have one, but I don't have one for various reasons. Wish I did, but I don't, unfortunately. Um, what games are you looking forward to in 2012? Mass Effect 3. It's really the only game I'm looking forward to. The other ones kind of catch my interest every now and then, but I have a very limited budget of what I can get in terms of new games, so... Mass Effect 3. It's really the only one that I'm interested in enough in getting to actually get and look forward to enough. Um, so yeah, Mass Effect 3. Anyways, on to the next questions. Alright, more questions. This one's from Mamaki1987. Hey Mamaki, how's it going? Uh, first of all, congrats on 1700 subs. Thank you. Um, are you planning on playing Oblivion completely through all, gu all guilds, all quests you find? I'll play Oblivion out as far as I can. Um, I'll play the main story out completely um, because that's the only quest storyline that I can guarantee I can play out. <laughs> uh, keep in mind that Oblivion is a blind run for me. I've never played it before, so I don't really know what all is involved in it, and I don't know um, where to go or who to talk to or anything like that. And um, I'm not looking for spoilers for that sort of stuff, so... If I stumble upon a quest, I'll certainly do my best to uh, complete it, assuming I can, and I don't do something else that ends up screwing it up. But um, I will certainly go through every quest I find, yes. Now, will I get through all the quests? Probably not, because I don't know where they all are. Uh, will I get through all of the guilds? Probably not, because <laughs> I probably don't know how to get to them all. Um, but I will do a lot of the exploration, and I will certainly go through the main quest. That's the only quest line I can guarantee I'll go through. But um, I don't like to leave quests behind in games when I'm playing them, whether I'm playing them for the first time or the 1500th time. So I will play it out as completely as I can. But again, I'm a noob at Oblivion, so if I miss stuff, I miss stuff. If I screw up a quest by killing somebody by accident, well, I guess I do that. Um, like I said, I'm a noob, so the only good thing I've got going for me is that I have experience in RPGs in general, and um, I do have this perf this completionist side of me that if I start a quest, I will, you know, follow the journal entries and stuff as best I can to complete it. And hopefully, I haven't really looked too much into the Oblivion journal at this point because I'm just starting it, but hopefully, it's a bit more. Um, helpful than the one in Morrowind was because that one was just terrible. <laughs> but um, as long as there's a decent way to uh, complete a quest, like there's a decent um, line to follow, a course to follow, I will go through and do it. So uh, I guess I'll just say that my Oblivion run will be as complete as it can possibly be for a noob, and we'll just have to leave it at that. <laughs> um, should be interesting. I, I don't think I've ever played, so certainly an RPG like that, um, blind for videos before. So should be interesting. Anyways, um, yeah, thanks for your question. On to the next one, assuming there is a next one. All right, and I'm back for the last comment in the questions video comment section. This will finish out the uh, Q&A for us. And this one's from Darinus from Brocraft. Hey, Narlo, how's it going? Um, awesome accomplishment, God. Congrats and well deserved. Don't have any new questions at this time. Just a hearty congrats, and we'll see if we can't come up with some for 1800. Fantastic. Uh, Darinus, you bring up a good point. Or Narlo, however you want to be called, I don't know. <laughs> or G, I guess. Um, you bring up a good point. Um, when I bring up these Q&As, you guys, you don't need to um, like feel obligated or anything to put up questions. 
Um, certainly if you can't come up with any interesting questions that haven't been asked already, like what's your favorite blank, you know, um, don't feel obligated to, uh, to post questions if you don't have any questions. Sometimes maybe you know enough about me already, maybe you're, you, you don't have any, uh, I guess I should get the game going for you. you maybe you don't have any, um, interesting questions come up, but th that's fine, that's great, you don't have to. Um, I know for the, my more long-term veteran viewers, um, you've probably heard a half dozen questions already that uh, every time you think of asking one, you've maybe, maybe remembered that I've already been asked it before, that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of the uh, Q&As are for my more recent subscribers to get a hold of me, to uh, get to know me better, to interact with me. Um, a lot of a lot of you more veteran long-term subscribers, you know, we interact on a regular basis as it is, you know, maybe, especially for you, Darrenus, and your Brocraft series, I watch all of your videos, and, well, all of the Brocraft series videos, I can't say I watch all of the other ones, but Brocraft is pretty awesome, um, and I interact with you on that on a regular basis, and you comment on my videos on a regular basis, and we have good um, rapport, and various other subscribers, you know, who comment on my videos, you know, I try and respond back, and we have some good interaction there, but maybe for some of the more recent viewers of mine, maybe they're new to my channel, maybe they haven't had that much interaction, and this is a way to give back to them, and and to you veteran viewers of mine as well, this is, this is my way to give back to you guys um, in a way that a lot of YouTubers don't. A lot of YouTubers, you watch your vi their videos, you even post comments to their videos, you interact as much as you can, and because, you know, they have thousands of viewers and stuff, they can't get to every every comment, and you can get often overlooked and stuff, so I'm trying to get back to you guys in a way that's more specific, because even I, at this point, um, don't get to every comment, every, every um, sort of interaction that you guys try and make even though as much as I want to, I can't get to all of them. Um, and the more people that view my videos and assuming I ever get any more popular, the more um, interactions that happen, the more trouble that's going to be to get to everybody. So this is a way to get directly to you guys and for you guys to get directly to me. Um, but you don't have to feel obligated to it. If you can't come up with questions, it's fine. You don't have to. It's it's cool. There's always going to be a next time for as long as I'm around. <laughs> or as long as I keep getting popular, I guess. And even if it comes to the point where I don't gain any more subscribers for some reason, or I gain them really, really slowly, I'll come up with ways to interact with you guys one way or another. I've always been, I've always been interested in the feedback from you guys. Before I was really into doing the Q&As, I had various... Um, voting things for you guys to interact with with various games that I would start up with. Um, Dragon Age Origins, for example, my character is a dwarf noble. And that was one that my viewers decided me to play on. So that's what we played, and I'm still working on getting that played out. Um, so there's always going to be this viewer interaction that I do specifically for you guys t to uh, take the time to interact with me and me to interact with you. and. I know that as a YouTube viewer myself, when I'm watching another person's video and I post a comment or I interact in some way and they respond back, that just makes my day. That just that's just awesome. No matter how no matter how um, how much I know the person or not, you know, when I'm watching a Brocraft video from Narlo, uh, when he comments back, that's just awesome. It's like wow, this. YouTuber, this you know, every, everybody on YouTube is famous to me. Uh, just I'm just gonna get that out there right now. I don't care if you have one subscriber or if you have a hundred thousand subscribers. If I watch your video and I comment and you comment back to me, it, it's like wow, this famous YouTuber has taken time out of his or her day to uh, to comment back to me, you know, to respond to me and to be interested in what I have to say and that sort of thing. And, and it's just awesome. So. Um, for any of you out there who feel the same way, you know, these are these are ways for you to get back to me that you can get direct responses to. And um, if I find it to be cool and awesome and stuff to get noticed and recognized like that from other YouTubers, I'm sure there are people who watch my videos who 
who uh, feel the same way. So it, it's always nice to be able to uh, do that. And I hope that as long as I'm here on YouTube, I can keep doing that for you guys because it's nice. And I wish, I wish it were a case that other YouTubers could do that too. Um, but of course, you know, once you get to a certain point in popularity, even a QA and a like this, you know, you can't get through a 200,000 questions. So I, I don't know. I just... I guess it's one of those reasons to appreciate not being quite as popular at this point, but um, yeah, after all this rambling, I guess long story short is, don't worry if you don't have a question, don't worry about it. If you do, great, we'll we'll uh, we'll um, get through it, and um, there's always going to be a next time as long as I'm here on YouTube, so there you go. Um, anyways, that's going to be it for this Q&A, however super long and rambly it's been. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I am the good old gamer, and as always... Um, thanks for watching, and bye for now. We'll have another Q&A when I reach 1,800 subscribers, if not before for some other special occasion. But anyways, um, that's it. Bye.